just fill this atmosphere with worship in this place. We have gathered here today to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I wonder if you would just do that right now. Just wherever you are, would you lift your hands? Would you lift your voice in praise and adoration to the Most High God? He is holy. He is worthy. We worship you.
mention of the name King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the you want to speak to us we know that you have a word that you want to impart to us oh God so we come against every distraction every hindrance that would try to disrupt that would try to get in the way of what the Holy Spirit is wanting to impart today and God we ask that you would rule that you would reign in this house today and that above everything that the name of Jesus Christ would be glorified that the name of Jesus Christ would be high and lifted up in this place in Jesus name and everybody said amen give him praise hallelujah hallelujah we worship you God we worship there is no one like you hallelujah hallelujah his presence is in here can you feel it 
I can feel his presence and I am so excited about what he is going to do. And so we, at this time, we wanna dismiss Kid Life to their classes grade one through five. And we also have middle school that is going to room 207. So if you have children here or young people, they can exit at this time. They're gonna have a great time today. And why don't you turn around and tell somebody you're excited to see them this morning. Welcome them into the house of the Lord. Amen. presence that's in this place today. Well, welcome to Life Source International Church on this great Sunday. So excited to see all of you here in the house of God. And uh, if this is your first time with us, thank you so much for coming here. Uh, I always say there's a lot of places that you can be. There's a lot of things that can keep you busy on Sunday, but there's nothing like being in the house of God, in his presence, and being with other believers to be encouraged by the word of God. We can't make it without him. We shouldn't try to make it without him and his word and the fellowship of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Well, if this is your first time with us, if you'll just take a second. There's a guest card in the pew rack in front of you. Fill that out for us. Turn it into the lobby, and we have a special gift for you just to show our appreciation for coming here. And hopefully you enjoy yourself, you feel the presence of God, you receive from the word, and we would love to have you back again and be a part of the family here at Life Source International Church. All of our webcast viewers, thank you for tuning in. We know you're from watching from all different parts of the world. So whatever time of day it is, we know God's presence is going to be with you right at this moment, and he's going to minister to your lives. Well, there's just one thing that I want to make you aware of this morning. We'll keep it nice and short. It's very important. We've been talking to you about life groups kicking off in October. So I wanted to take a minute and just go through that list so that you're aware of where you can plug in if you're interested. Some of them are prayer groups. Some of them are more like Bible studies or fellowship groups. But it will be a great way for you to connect besides Sunday morning. So I just wanted to go over this list. Again, it'll kick off the first week in October, which it's hard to believe is next week. And they will go until the week before Thanksgiving, all right? So it's just about eight weeks of commitment and some of the classes are only every other week, so it may only be four times that you'll go. But this is a great way to plug in, and we'll hopefully kick back off in the spring. That way, everybody has a chance to just spend time with their family over the holidays. So it looks like every other Tuesday, starting on October 1st at 7 p.m., Ryan and Crystal Dorsey will be hosting a 20s and 30s college-age uh, small group for The Point. So it's called a point group, and that's going to be at their home. They will give you the address out at the uh, student's banner in the lobby, or you can email Ryan at dorsey.rm at icloud.com. That's dorsey.rm at icloud.com. And you can get information on the address and um, the people that are in the group, but it's a great time of fellowship, and they pray together. I've been a part of the group. It's incredible the encouragement that you'll receive every other Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at the Dorsey's home. 
Also on Tuesdays here at our White Marsh campus in room 207 at 7 p.m. is going to be a Bible study on prayer with Donna Cantwell. Donna is a part of our um, uh, prophetic team, and she has many years of intercessory uh, uh, time and prayer with the Lord. So she has a lot that she can offer to the body of Christ regarding prayer. I know you will be doing prayer, not just learning about it. So that will be a great class to be a part of as well. On Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. in the chapel, we have a Bible study on the life of Christ with Jackie Hamilton and Paris Camus. And those ladies uh, joined forces a few years ago on a joint Bible study together. And it has really grown. It started with very few numbers. And now they have 20 to 30 people coming out on Wednesday nights for that Bible study. So that's also another way for you to plug in. Every other Wednesday night starting October the 9th, uh, in the cafe at 7 p.m., we're going to have another point uh, small group. And that is going to be, again, every other Wednesday night starting October the 9th. This one is going to be a new one. The Dorsey's has been going on for a while. So we wanted to just give another location as an option for people within college age group or 20s and 30s to plug in. So if you're available, October 9th, come on out. We'd love to get to know you. And then lastly, on Thursdays at 6 p.m. in the cafe, we will have we have a prayer group that's been going on with Mike Soddles. And he's been meeting faithfully and uh, just, just going to prayer with fellow believers every Thursday night at 6 p.m. in the cafe. So if you're available and might, maybe Monday nights don't work for your work schedule, come on out on Thursday night. There are opportunities for prayer. There are opportunities for Bible study and all those great things. Of course, Monday night prayer is a group in and of itself, and that's not necessarily considered a life group, but I want to encourage you. That is something that's taking place every Monday. It is very amazing. It's, it's, it's the most powerful thing that you can do is commit yourself to coming on Monday nights to pray together as a congregation. Revival comes when the body of Christ joins together corporately and prays and seeks for God to move. So let's continue to do that together. But these groups, they're listed in our newsletter. The September newsletter is still out. And then beginning next week, we'll have the October newsletter available for you. So if you are wondering, oh, man, I didn't grab all that information, you can get it in the newsletter, all right? Well, thank you so much. Hopefully you can plug in and God will continue to pour into your life. Amen. Have a great day. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to share something with you real quick that I feel like the Lord has placed on my heart uh, when Pastor had asked me to give the giving teaching today. And this comes from our one-year Bible reading earlier in the week, September 23rd. Isaiah 41, verse 17 says, When the poor and needy search for water and there is none, and their tongues are parched from their thirst, then I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will never forsake them. I will open up rivers for them on high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valley. In the deserts, they will find pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will flow across the dry, parched ground. I will plant trees, cedar, acacia, myrtle, olive, cypress, fir, and pine on barren land. Everyone will see this miracle and understand that the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, who did it. So I... You know, I can't speak for anyone in here, but I feel pretty comfortable that if I were to take a poll, at some point in time in, in 2013, probably everybody here has felt like they were in a desert or in a dry place. We all go through those times in our lives, and it's at those times when we need to continue to seek the Lord and be faithful to him. It goes on in Isaiah 43, verse 20. It says, the wild animals in the fields will thank me, the jackals and ostriches too, for giving them water in the wilderness. Yes, I will make springs in the desert so that my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself, and they will someday honor me before the whole world. But my dear people, you refuse to ask for my help. You have grown tired of me. You have not brought me lambs for burnt offerings. You have not honored me with sacrifices, though I have not burdened and wearied you with my requests for grain offerings and incense. You have not brought me fragrant incense or pleased me with the fat from sacrifices. Instead, you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your faults. And it really made me think, you know, oftentimes when we're in the desert, when we're going through a hard time, it's, it's very easy for us to just burden the Lord and just come to him and say, God, why am I in this place? Why am I in this place? But if we, as we continue to be faithful to him in our giving, it says here, as, as we continue to give to him, even through our desert, 
He will provide for us. He will make a spring when there seems like there's no water around. He will continue to provide for you. So no matter what you're going through, just continue. I've heard Pastor Mike say numerous times, God can do so much more with your 10% than you can do with it. You know, he doesn't ask for much. He just asks for that 10%. So for those of you who are guests, we don't pass plates here. Um, We have giving receptacles. We have two here in the front and two on this side, three along the back main aisles. We have two at the balcony main exits as well. And those of you giving online uh, or watching on the webcast, we do have online giving. It is safe and secure. So we want to just pray a blessing over you as you give. And again, continue no matter what circumstance you're going through or what, where you are in your life right now, know that the Lord is faithful. He will provide a way when there seems to be no way. So Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your word, Lord. We know that your word says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if God back then you would provide when we were in a time of desert, Lord, the same applies today. And we thank you, Father, for your faithfulness to your people. As they continue to be faithful to you, Lord, you will bless them in ways that they, don't only, that they don't even see or could imagine right now. Father, you have such great and mighty plans for your people. And we pray that you would just continue to put it on their hearts, Lord God, that when they are burdened, Lord God, that they just need to continue to be faithful to the Lord. And we thank you right now for hearing and answering our prayers. Lord, continue to bless this service and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen.
Come on, just praise him, church. <laughs> Come on, praise him. What do you need from God? Just praise him. We're not going to sit back and wait on handouts. We're going to stand up and we're going to praise him because God is God. And whatever we need, we're going to praise him through the battle. Whatever breakthrough that you need, if you just keep praising, he will bring you through it. When they marched around the city of Jericho on the seventh day, they shouted. They didn't try to scale the wall. They, they didn't try to go around. They shouted. And in the Hebrew, in that scripture, it means alarm. We're letting the enemy know. And our alarm is our praise. We're letting the enemy know we're not dead. Even though you hit me, even though you want to take me out, we're still going to praise. And when he turns around, I thought I beat you. Just keep praising the almighty God. No matter what you're going through, if you need a breakthrough, I'm telling you the time is now. Don't wait any longer. God is here for you, for your breakthrough. You can have it today. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him right now. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. You're already dancing on the grave of your enemy because you know where God brought you through. You've already stood in front of a wall and God brought you through it. That's why you're praising. And some of us, maybe we haven't gone through our wall yet and gotten our breakthrough. But we have to praise in faith. Come on, let's just praise the church for a moment. We can take time out for God. Give him one more praise. He's so worthy. Jesus. Lord, give us breakthrough today. As Pastor Mike is at another place ministering, let's just pray and lift Pastors Mike and Becky up this morning. And also for Pastor Randy, his father is having surgery. So we need people to pray on Tuesday. How many would you commit to praying on Tuesday for Pastor Randy for his father's surgery? Thank you so much. Let's just lift them up right now. God, we come to you this morning, God. And we we pray, God, that you would touch our pastors this morning, oh God, as they minister. Oh God, anoint him, God, with your Holy Spirit, God. Give him the power, oh God. 
Lord, under the sound of his voice, God, may people have breakthrough today, oh God. Lord, that people would come to know you, Jesus. Oh God, be with our pastors, oh God. Give them strength and protection, God. Give them traveling mercies, oh God. Be with them every single step of the way, God. Whatever the enemy intends for bad, God. Lord, we know that you have it for good, God, and we give them to you in the name of Jesus, God. Touch Pastor Randy's father, oh God. We pray for that surgery to go well, oh God. You are the great physician, God. You know all. You are in control, God, and we give that to you right now in the name of Jesus. And today, God, I pray over the people of God, Lord, that whatever breakthrough that we need this morning, God, that we will react the right way and make the right decisions in order to get our breakthrough this morning. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated this morning. This weekend was a rough week. It, it, was, it was tough. This week was very busy. We had a lot going on. We had our Club Zero event for a youth ministry. We had over 200 young people on a Friday night lifting up God. Our special guest, Michael Rowan, last night we also had our 20s and 30s event and, and beyond. And it was just an exciting time this weekend. And over the past couple of days, something was going on with my neck. I don't, I don't quite know what it was. It was just... It, it was really stiff, so if I turn and I look at you like this, don't think I'm crazy, okay? I'm just trying to save my neck. And this morning when I woke up, I had been struggling with, with what to speak on. My God, what, what, do, you, what, what do you want? You, do, you, don't just, you don't just pull a file out and just do whatever you have. You... You pray, you seek the face of God. God, what do you want? I woke up this morning not knowing what the message was going to be about. I really, just to be totally transparent, just trusting in God. And as soon as I woke up, I could not move my head. I could not lift my neck up. I couldn't move it to the right or left. It was excruciating pain this morning. And I was laying in bed, and I was thinking, the first thought in my head was, we've got to get somebody <laughs> to speak this morning. I'm not going to be able to get, this is crazy, what, what's going on? And then I thought, you puny, li- what are you thinking? What are you thinking? And after about 20 minutes of laying there, I heard one word, breakthrough. And when I heard that word... I took my hands and I put it behind my head. And I said, God, you're going to have to give me strength. And I picked up my pitiful, stiff neck carcass out of that bed and got ready. And I said, God, I don't know what you want the people to know this morning, but I'm just going to trust you. And I'm telling you, God wants to give you a breakthrough. God wants to give you a breakthrough. But some of us have to just reach in the back of our head, as Pastor Mike says, and strengthen yourself. And pick our pitiful, stiff-necked carcasses out of bed and get up and start praising him. Because when you praise him, that's when the walls come down. When you shout, like the people at Jericho, that's when the walls came down. In the Hebrew, that shout was alarm. How many of you have ever had the most annoying alarm that you can think of? How many of you have a spouse that has the most annoying alarm? Okay, let's not go there. I used to have this alarm that was so annoying. Bah, 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 bah. And my parents could hear it in their bedroom. They just said, turn that thing off. I don't even know where I got it. It was just this big, giant concoction that we had. And that thing was just awful. And when we shout, it's like an alarm to the enemy. When we praise, it's like, bah, bah, bah. And it annoys him to the bone. In fact, when the enemy starts to speak death over us, I hope we just keep praising and that alarm goes off. Well, you're... 
but you're back, back, back. And we cut him off. Don't let the enemy have a foothold. Don't back off of your praise to let the enemy have a foothold. God wants to give you a breakthrough. And the other thing is this. When they marched around the walls, they didn't shout at the wall. Hey! That's not what moves walls. Quit shouting at your situation and start shouting unto God because God is the only one who can bring you through it. Check this out. My daughter is in soccer, and I always try to get her pumped before the game, so I ask her, what do you do when you fall down? She said, well, I trained her on this. She didn't just automatically come up with these answers. But now she does when I ask her, what do you do when you fall down? She says, I get back up. Oh, by the way, before I go there, my daughter came to me this morning, and she started praying for me. And this is what I know God just used her because she doesn't always use words like this. But she just she came back there and she put her hands. And she's in the name of Jesus. Keep daddy going. Just keep daddy going. Just keep daddy going. And man, I hope that's your prayer. If you need a breakthrough, just keep it going. Just keep it. Don't stop praising. Don't lay down. I know it's tough. I know it's I know we get weak. Keep it going. Keep it going. Because the time when you think that you need to stop and nothing's going to happen, you could be right there close to your wall and the other thing well we'll get to that so I asked her what do you do when you get hurt so I keep going what do you do when you fall down get back up daddy whose ball is it my ball <laughs> whose field is it my field who's the monster I am she started off at goalie at soccer, so all her, her coaches and friends call her the monster. So she loves that. So she goes out and she's like, I'm going to be the monster, Daddy. Whose field is it? My field. But when she goes out there on the field when it's game time, she tends to keep a little distance from the group. She tends to keep distance between her and, and where the ball is in the middle of that group. She knows the words to say, but when she actually plays, it's a different story. We know the motions, people of God. We know the words to say. We know the actions. We, we know everything. But when it's game time, when it's time to really praise, see, you don't know my situation, Pastor Josh. You don't know what happened this week. I can't lift my hands because the enemy cut them off. The enemy beat me. I'm down here. That's okay. Because if you just keep praising... If I can't lift my arms and I can't stand up, I'm going to lift my head and I'm going to speak out praises to God. Whatever I have to do, I'm going to speak praises to God. We all go through battles every week. We all have walls where we need a breakthrough and we need to know the answers. We need to, we know the talk and what to say. But when it gets down to it, we'd rather be pulled out of the situation instead of go through the situation. Going through it means injury, blood, sweat, and tears sometimes. But what are we willing to go through to win? 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. Second Samuel 5, beginning in verse 17. It's when the Philistines realize that David has become king. He's become the leader. He's become anointed as king over Israel. In verse 17, it says, when the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went down to the stronghold. Verse 18, now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, shall I go attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, go. For I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hands. So David went to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Baal Perazim. The Philistines abandoned their idols there, and David and his men carried them off. 
Verse 22, once more the Philistines came up and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of the Lord, and he answered, do not go straight up, but circle around behind them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move quickly, because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as the Lord commanded him, and he struck down the Philistines all the way to Gibeon, to Gezer. Before we continue with that, what the enemy likes to do is build up a wall in front of us so we can't get past it. And he's standing at the top and he has these boulders that hit us. Sickness, disease, financial problems, whatever it is that we're going through. And he hits us from the top. And we get weak, and we get injured, and we get knocked down, and we can't move. And when we talk about, you don't know what I've been through, and you don't know my situation that's week, this week, that's what I mean. We're behind a wall every single day until we get to heaven. There's going to be walls. However, there are, are more than one, one wall, and God is trying to teach us something at one of those walls. And oftentimes we stay there the whole time and we never learn because we want God to pull us out of the situation. But if he pulls us out of the situation, then we don't learn what he wanted us to learn. God wants to bring us through the situation, even though it's going to hurt when I break through the walls and I might get injured and I might get bloody and it might be a little bit of a mess. What I'm going to learn is something greater because when the walls come crumbling down, because I was praising God the whole way and I wasn't laying down, staying in the same place. And when I was praising God in, in faith and the walls came down, I get to walk over the carcass of the enemy. Maybe even do a little jig just because I'm happy. Go over and look inside of his tent and take back what he took. There's my passion. That's why I got into this thing in the first place. There's my salvation for my kids. Hmm, let's see, let me get my choice, because the enemy is defeated. But don't think it ends there, and you just get the victory the rest of your life. There's another wall, but that's great, because consider it pure joy that you face trials. Consider it pure joy. You don't see a whole lot of people walking around saying, I lost my job today. Congratulations, man. God must be doing a great work in your life. However, if nothing's going wrong in our lives and we don't have any walls, I'd wonder how we're spending our lives. I wonder how we're spending our coin behind that wall. Reaction time. There was a coach and a recruiter, I've said this in here before, I believe, where th this recruiter, uh, the, the, the coach wanted the recruiter to come help him recruit some football players for college. And the recruiter came over and said, Coach, uh, I know I played for you before, but I'm not really sure what type of football player that you're looking for. And the coach said, well, you know those type of players where they go out there and they get knocked down, they stay down? He said, yeah, I don't think you're wanting one of those, right? He said, no, absolutely not. But you know those players that go out and they get knocked down, they get back up a couple times, but if they get injured, they'll stay down. He said, I'm not sure I'm following you. You don't want those either, right? He said, right. But you know the guy that goes out there, and he keeps getting knocked down, and he keeps getting up every time, and he keeps getting knocked down, and he keeps getting up every time. He said, that's what you want, coach. That's what you want. He said, no, I want to find the guy knocking everyone down. <laughs> that's who I want. And that's who God's looking for. God's looking for us not to just keep getting up and saying, oh, I'm still up, devil. Oh, I'm still up, devil. He was looking for someone to walk over and knock him down in faith and in your praise. That's how you defeat the enemy. When you praise the Lord, you send out a war cry. In the Hebrew, that shout there in Jericho also means war cry. You let out a war cry. You are warring for your situation. We don't understand all the time what praise really is. We think it's just surrendering and giving God. Sometimes it is going to war. And I encourage you, start praising God 
in your situation. Man, Monday was the worst day in my life. Praise him. Thank you, God, for whatever you're teaching me. Thank you, God, for whatever's on the other side of that wall because I can't see it. I can't go around it. I can't scale it. All I know to do is go through it, but I can't do it alone. And that's okay because Jesus is standing right there holding your hand, and he's going to bring you through the wall. And he's going to put a hole in that wall, and it's going to crumble, and then you get to see what he was teaching you. And then when you learn that, then there's another wall way down the road. So I'm just going to enjoy it while it lasts. And then when that wall's there again, here we go again, Lord. What are you trying to teach me? I just want to grow. I just want to get better. I know that I have to go through this, and I know that you're teaching me something. It's hard to look at breakthrough like that, isn't it? A lot of times we think God is giving us breakthrough, and then my life is going to be great. Flowers and cotton candy and fuzzies everywhere. It's not true. God is teaching us. He's teaching us. So what we have to do is we have to set our minds a little bit, reprogram them, and think, what am I learning through this? What am I learning through the trial? What am I learning through the breakthrough? And what did he want me to learn that I couldn't see on the other side? Reaction number one in verse 17, David went to the stronghold. When the enemy came full force, when they heard he was anointed king, they went up full force. See, when you actually stand up and become who you are, the enemy's coming after you. When he sees, oh, wow, we got an anointed person over there, all right, let's bring the army. We're going full force. you got to be ready. But... We have to react the right way. David reacted this way. Reaction number one. He went to the stronghold. What is your first reaction to trials? What is your first reaction? Oh, sign into Facebook. Uh, today was the worst day of my life. Waiting on the comments. What's your first reaction? Hey, did you hear what happened to me? No, no. No, I know. He said this, and she said this, and now I'm just all upset. Sorry, I'm, I'm used to talking to the teenagers downstairs, and they get that part. All the girls are like, I do that all the time. What is your first reaction? David's first reaction was to go to the stronghold. I want our first reaction to be to stand on the rock, to go to the stronghold of Jesus. My first reaction is to stand on you, God. That's all I know to do. I'm not going to try to do this and that and this. I'm just going to stand on you. The only foundation that I know that actually lasts is you. So I'm going to stand on the rock. David went to the stronghold. Are you holding strong to him? If that's your first reaction, you're already one step ahead. He is your refuge. He's your fortress. He's your strength. Verse 18 and 19. This is, this is so cool, David's reaction. Now the Philistines had come and spread out in the valley. So David inquired of the Lord, shall I go attack the Philistines? Obviously, he didn't make that decision on his own. So what was he doing? Waiting. His second reaction was wait. Will you deliver them into my hands? I'm waiting on you, God. I'm not going to go try to tackle my situation on my own because it doesn't work. When I tried to start my lawnmower when I was younger, it wouldn't work. I had a riding lawnmower that my dad just bought. And he was so upset because I broke that thing the first day we got it. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. You better fix this thing. And I did everything. I, I pulled out spark plugs. I replaced the battery. I pulled out the gas tank. I cleaned that out. I did everything that I knew to do. Just nothing. Click, click. Two weeks went by. Every time I passed by my dad, he's like, just watching what's next. I said, Dad, just give, me, just give me one more day. Just give me one more day. And, you know, that was so stressful because I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how much trouble. I didn't know if I was going to have to pay for the lawnmower finally I went out and I sat, sat down sat down on the riding lawnmower and I was just 
I looked up and I was like, oh yeah, God. It's like, you care about these things, don't you? So please, God, whatever you do, I just, I want to trust in you right now. Please start this running lawnmower. I know it seems so small. I know it seems so crazy, but I really need to just trust in you. I don't know why I didn't pray the first time, and I kid you not, as soon as I prayed that prayer, I turned it on, and it started up, and it kept running. And I think God has a sense of humor sometimes, so told you so, you know. And my reaction time was wrong because I tried to do it on my own instead of just go to God. But anyway, his... His second reaction was to wait on the Lord. He waited for God. So you're saying I've got to stay in this battle? You're saying that even though I'm weak, I've got to keep on fighting? I thought I came to church this morning to feel good. Waiting isn't my first choice. We were eating dinner one night. My daughter said, Daddy, I can't eat my vegetables. My belly hurts. I said, well, you can't have ice cream if you don't eat your vegetables. Aaliyah said, well, if I have an ice cream, it will make my belly feel better, and then I can eat my vegetables. <laughs> There's an idea. She said it just like that. There's an idea. I'm thinking, that ice cream is the only thing keeping her close to eating her vegetables. If I give her that ice cream, I got nothing. Then the vegetables are done with. And I believe for us, there's something on the other side of our wall that God alone sees. And if he's taken me there, I know it's good. And that's the only thing keeping us in the fight. Knowing what's on the other side isn't going to help us. But knowing the God that we serve that knows what's on the other side, that's what's important. That's what keeps us in it. I want to get my ice cream and my cheesecake with my fudge topping and cherry on top. I want it now. I want to see it. I want what God has and I want more. And the only way I'm going to get what God has has is if I wait. If I allow this trial to teach me something, don't get fooled by wanting to be pulled out of the situation to where we don't learn. Because then when we want to grow again, we're going to get put right back in the same situation anyway. We don't get to shortcut God. We don't get to scale the wall. We don't get to find a tunnel somewhere where we get through and we didn't have to go through that battle. Realize that it's going to happen, but there is breakthrough. Reaction number three. So David went to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, as waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Baal Perazim. In the Hebrew, it means Lord of the Breakthrough. Lord of the breakthrough. So David went to Lord of the breakthrough, and there he defeated him. Are you going to the Lord of the breakthrough to get your breakthrough? As waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. So that place was called Baal Perazim, Lord of the breakthrough. Reaction number three. Attack. Go. The Lord released him. Go, David. I will deliver them into your hands. See, God has already promised us victory, church. So now attack. How do we do that? Asked Joshua and the Israelites when they marched around the walls and they shouted. And they shouted. And they shouted. And the walls came down. You want to know how to attack? You shout and praise in the midst of your battle. The enemy hates it. He doesn't want to see you go through with a smile on your face. He wants you dead and flat on your face. The shout at Jericho in the Hebrew means war cry or alarm, like I said. What good is it to shout at your situation? Shout unto God. You ever see those movies where the good guy always gets, for some reason, the good guy always gets beat up the worst. And, but I love those movies where the enemy thinks that he's won, <laughs> and he comes over, and he just beats the, the, the good guy, and he's, he's laying there, and the enemy just walks off, you know, talking to his friends, hey, I got him, and this, then he gets back up, and he's like, like, I'm not done yet, right? And then the enemy has a crazy look on his face, like, 
oh, no. And he comes over, he beats the guy again, and he walks over, he gets back up, and it's hard, but he still does it. And then you hear this emotional music come on because the guy's just going to keep getting back up. You know he's not going to get knocked down. And finally, he defeats the enemy. God is looking for us to keep praising him. When the enemy knocks us down and the enemy's walking that way thinking that he beats you, praise you, God. Even though it hurts, even though I don't feel you today, I'm going to praise you because I don't praise off a of feeling. I praise off what I know. And what I know is that you're the Lord of the breakthrough. And if you're the Lord of the breakthrough, then you're going to bring me through my situation. So I'm never going to stop praising you. I don't care how stiff-necked I get. I'm not going to sit in my bed any longer. I'm not going to lie motionless like Lazarus in the tomb. Maybe the tomb is your wall. And maybe we feel like we're dead. What did Jesus do when he heard about Lazarus? Lazarus is sick. This is what Jesus did. Jesus, what are you going to do? He just waited. Why? Why wait? Why wait, Jesus? He's going to die. Why wait? He's just sleeping. He's not dead. He's just sleeping. Some of you have accepted death, and what I'm telling you is he has come that you may have life, and have life abundantly. He's come to wake us up and say, don't forget to praise me in the morning. Don't forget to get up and lift your hands. Don't forget to give me everything that I deserve. Don't forget to let me know how worthy that I am. So you can have what you need. I have it right here. I just had it right here. All you got to do is just keep praising. I'm telling you. Just, just come on. I just want you to learn something. Just, I want you to get it right here. It's so close. Just keep going. Don't know. You had it. You had it. You had it. Keep going. Keep going, Daddy. Keep it going. Keep him going. We have to never back down. When the enemy beats us, never back down. Get back up. Never stop praising. Why do we keep getting up and why do we do it with a smile on our face? Because James 1, 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work. Because if it doesn't finish its work, you got pulled out of the situation. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. There, there's so much meat in this scripture right here. Start with verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. A lot of us stop right there. Pfft. Joy with trials? You got, let me read that again. We don't really get that. Consider it joy? Really? That I'm going through this? Are you telling me that? Really? Does it really say that in the word of God? Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials. Surely it's got a different meaning. Surely we've got we've to fix that. No, we have to consider it pure joy. Why? Because in verse 3, you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. God's going to test you, and we're going to keep going. And that perseverance, because you keep going, that work in you is going to be finished when you get a breakthrough through that wall. And then you'll be mature and complete in that situation, not lacking anything. And then so the process goes again. Be careful with your reaction. I've reacted in the wrong way many times, and it's kept me from seeing the other side of that wall. Ask Moses. He knows. How did he react when he hit the rocks? Cost him something. The promised land. His anger at the situation cost him. I didn't see anger in David's three reactions, and that's why he was victorious. That's why he had a breakthrough. Verse 17, when the enemy hears that you've been anointed, 
When the enemy hears that you've been praising, he's coming for you. You have got to be ready. You have got to be praising. You've got to already be going. In verse 20, in Baal Perazim, which means Lord of the Breakthrough. In other words, David went to the Lord of the Breakthrough, and his enemies were defeated. How many times do we not get our breakthrough because we didn't react the right way in our situation? Look at Naaman. Naaman almost missed out on his healing. Naaman the leper. When he went and the prophet said, go dip seven times. And he's thinking, why can't you just pray for me now? Why can't I just get my healing now? Why can't I just get it now? Why can't I get my financial breakthrough now? Why can't I just do that now? Because I serve God and God can do it now. It's because we're trying to learn something. God is trying to teach us something through the breakthrough. Go dip in it seven times. Can you imagine him going over to the river? And it might have even been embarrassing. Who knows? He's like, you know what? I'll try it. You know, the servant's back there and he dips in. You got anything, Naaman? I got nothing. All right, try again. I think he said seven. You know, he dips in again. (laughs) Hey, just just playing in the water here. You know, people walking by. It might have been embarrassing. It might have looked crazy to him. But on the seventh time, he got his healing because he learned something. You know, sometimes your breakthrough is not always just for you. Sometimes people are watching you on the side, seeing how you're going to react to your situation. Some of you, your kids are watching you inside of your home, seeing how you're going to react in a situation. Some of you are influencing and teaching people around you in your environment how you react to a situation. You can impact a breakthrough in somebody else's life by how you react with your breakthrough. He's not going to pull you out. He's going to bring you through. Quit praying that God pulls you out. Pray that God brings you through because if God pulls you out, remember, we didn't learn anything. If you're here today and you're weary and you're weak and you're beat up from battle and you're tired of hearing about winning and you're ready to take back what the enemy has stolen what is on the other side of that wall that you need for some it's passion for some it's salvation for some it's your son and it's your daughter for some it's your finances for some it's your relationship restoration for some it's your deliverance for something that's had you bound up the lord of the breakthrough is here to pull you through and when you go through you will come out gold Look at Joseph from the pit to the prison to the palace. That's not cakewalk. There's got to be some breakthroughs. He had to fight for his life and stick through it. And on the other side of it was a fulfillment of a dream that he had when he was a little boy. And maybe for some of us, our breakthrough is to go get our dreams that we've had since we were young. But God is trying to teach you something before your dreams become fulfilled. But I wanted to do that. What is God teaching me? Look at the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. That fire wall that they needed to get through. They stood tall no matter what everything, everybody else around them, they were bowing down. The circumstances around them We're influencing them to do everything but give it all to God. And sometimes our circumstances can be all around us and and influence you to do everything but praise God. Everything but getting up and lifting your hands one more time. But they stood strong. We have to stand on the rock. Stand strong. I don't care if Everybody else around me is beating me. I don't care if everybody else is bowing down. I'm going to stand on the rock in faith, believing that Jesus, that God is the only thing that is going to get me through that wall right there. My friends aren't going to be able to pull me up. Nothing's going to be able to get me around that wall. Nobody's going to dig me a tunnel. I've got to stand on the rock. God, just help me. God, it hurts. God, I don't know how I'm going to make it today. I don't know how I'm going to live. God, I need you. God, this wall just hurts. 
These boulders hurt. These rocks are hitting me. But God, I'm still praising you. Job, I lost my family. I lost everything. But I will never curse you. I will never go against you. Because we know the God that we serve. And some of you sitting in this room know what you've been through. And you know what God can do. You know the restoration processes that happens when you go through a wall. You know that if you just stand on the rock that God will bring you through. You know that if you get tried through the fire, you'll come out gold. You know like the Hebrew boys that if you stand in the fire, that you're not going to be standing alone. That the other one's going to be the son of God. And not even a hair on your head will be sins. Because he knows the hairs on your head, how many there are. You're the apple of his eye. He cares about you. You're above and not below. You're the head and not the tail. He calls you all kinds of good names in the Bible. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He's the Prince of Peace. He is the door. He is almighty. He is God. He's our Father. He's our Creator. How dare we never praise God in our situation? How can we not give everything to God? How can we not get a breakthrough because of the God that we serve? How can we not give everything that we have to Him? How can we not give our sons and our daughters to Him? How can we not give our sickness to Him? How can we not give our financial situation to Him? Because He is the God of, of everything. He is sovereign. He's in control. He is the King of kings. He is the master. And He will bring you through because He is the Lord of the breakthrough. Nobody knows breakthrough better than He does. He's been through it a long time. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He brought people through in the Bible. He brought some of you through. He's going to bring some of you through that haven't been through your wall yet. He is the Lord of the breakthrough. He knows it better than anyone. He knows what it looks like on the other side. All you have to do is look unto him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Because we don't see the path on the other side of that wall. But he does. Everyone stand to your feet all over this building and give God some praise. That he's going to bring you through. That he's going to give you a breakthrough. Come on, I mean really praise God. How many of you want it? How many of you need it? Come on, somebody. Give God some praise in this place. God, I pray that you give us breakthrough, oh God. Get us up out of bed, oh God, when we don't feel like it. Wake us up. This morning he said, break through. That's all I heard was break through. Break through. Break through. And if you want breakthrough, I want you to come up to this altar right now prophetic team please come and I want you to start praying that you get your breakthrough because God's going to bring you through whatever you need all over this place would you close your eyes and bow your head oh God do something big in this place today oh God Lord we stand on the rock of my salvation the stone that everyone else rejected. We don't reject, but we reject everything that's not of you, God, because we know it's not going to bring us through. All over this place, close your eyes, bow your head, and begin to praise God right now. That's the first thing. We just need to begin to speak blessing unto God. Oh, God. God, we praise you in this place. We lift your name up, oh God. Lord, prepare the hearts of people, oh God. Lord, give, give us, Lord God, our breakthrough, God. We've been battling for so long. God, it hurts. You've seen it. Everyone look at me for a second. When, when Jesus went and over to uh, Lazarus and he saw all the people it says that Jesus wept he was not weeping for Lazarus because he knew he was only sleeping he wasn't weeping because he was dead he saw them crying he, they, he saw them weeping over Lazarus and he wept Jesus feels our pain 
So this is for somebody this morning. When you, when you think that nobody else understands what you're going through, he does. And it doesn't matter if somebody on your right and left understands or not. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Jesus gets it. You not think that that was a wall when he was carrying the cross? I wonder if we think it was just an easy road because he was Jesus. Of course he could do it. That was not an easy road traveled when he carried that cross. He was beaten, he was bloody, and he was a mess. And what was he praying on that cross? Forgive them. Forgive them. That was a breakthrough that day so that we could have our breakthrough today. That was the breakthrough of all breakthroughs so you can have what you need. That's the God that we serve. If you don't think that nobody else understands, he does. God, we come to you right now and we begin to praise you, oh God. Lord, we begin to shout unto you, oh God. We begin to say hallelujah. We begin to say hallelujah. We begin to shout. Lord, not to our situation, but unto you who controls the situation, oh God. Lord, we give you everything. As the praise team begins to play, would you just begin to praise God? And we're going to pray that you get what you need. And if you're not up here and you know you need a breakthrough, get up here. Find someone to the right to the left and ask them if they need a breakthrough. If they say yes, bring them down here. God is going to give breakthrough today. Oh!